Welcome to this tutorial on Oak's content. We'll be covering adding a module, creating a file, and adding a web link. By the end of this tutorial, you should be able to explain how your course structure relates to Oak's content. You should be able to create that structure using modules and submodules, and to be able to add a file from your computer and a link to any content on the web. So let's get started. I'm going to begin in my Oaks class, and I'll choose content in the upper navigation, towards the left. When you come into content, it's completely blank, and that can be a little daunting. But don't worry, you have your course structure, so you know how you want this organized. The content tool uses modules and submodules to help you organize it. Think of a module as a file folder, and inside that file folder, you place items. These items are the actual pieces of content that you'll use to deliver your class. The module is merely an organizational structure. And just like file folders, you can have a module within a module. And that becomes a submodule. And let's begin by adding module one. On the left hand side, you'll see the box that says add a module. Click inside that and type in module one. Now I'm just going to hit the return key or the enter key on my keyboard. And I can continue doing this by just clicking again on the add a module at the bottom of the left hand side. And here's module two and module three. So you can see it's pretty easy to add modules. Now I'm going to click back on module one and let's start adding some content. When I click on a module, you'll notice now that it displays on the right hand side of my screen. So to add content, it pretty much says what you need to do, drag and drop files to create and update topics. So what I'm going to do is add a file from my computer. And the way I do this is to open up another window. And here is the file. And here's the folder that I have on my computer that contains all of my materials. So I'm going to start by clicking on my readings. And here I have a PDF file. I'm going to click, hold, and drag that into that box. And when I do, you'll notice that the little dotted line turns blue, which means I can let it go and it's going to drop into module one. Now let's add this second one. And when I grab it, hold, and drag it over, you'll know that the, notice that the box is missing but instead I get this blue line. This line indicates where this file will be placed. If I let it go now, it'll be placed under the Clorox Awards file. And if I let it go up here, it'll be placed before the Clorox Awards file. So I'm gonna let it go and it should be placed before that file. And lastly, I'm gonna add my Arby's file and drop it here. All right, in addition to this, I also have these assignment files. And I have four PDFs and a Word document. So I'm going to show you how by clicking and holding my Shift key down to select them all, I can grab them all and drag them in. Put them below here. And it'll load all of those files at one time. So that's how you can add files from your computer. Now I can add any file from my computer, but you have to remember that the student needs to be able to view it, which means they'll have to have the software needed to look at it. So try to stick with PDF, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. You can also add images and video files, but for video files, you really should stick with MP4s. Also, if you have large video files to add, please see your instructional technologist because there are better ways to add video to Oaks than just dragging and dropping it into your content area. The next most common task you'll do within content is adding a link to something on the web. Now I have these two videos up here at the top of my web browser that I'd like to add. And I'm gonna do that through the blue button that says new. And here I'll choose create a link. This is how you'll create a link to anything on the web. All right. 
my first one, I'm going to leave this window open and choose the tab at the top here to show the YouTube video that I need to include. And it's Bathing Your Baby with Johnson's. That's the name of the video. So I'll come back to the tab that contains my Oaks class and type in Bathing Your Baby. And I like to put an indicator of what this file is, so I'm just going to put that it's a video. Now I need the URL. And I always recommend that you copy and paste the URL. Never free type it. There's too many places for mistakes if you free type a URL. So I'm going to click go back to my bathing with baby here and I'm going to highlight the URL here at the top, copy it, either using my command or control C or by choosing edit copy. And I'm going to come back into the tab that contains Oaks and just paste it into this area here and click create. And now you'll see that it opens a brand new window and embeds the video directly here into my Oaks class. So I'm going to navigate back to module one using these little breadcrumbs here at the top. And I'm also going to add this article from CNN. So just like I did before, I'll choose new, create a link, highlight the URL, and this one is called Famous Stolen Paintings. So when I come back to my Oaks class, I'll type in, and then I'm going to paste the URL and click Create. And here you'll show it shows the preview, but you'll notice something's wrong. The article isn't showing up here within Oaks. This is an important thing to remember. Not all web pages will allow themselves to be embedded within another web page. And that's what's happening here. Basically, on the YouTube link, it was embedding that YouTube video here within Oaks. CNN and many other news agencies, such as the Washington Post and the New York Times, don't allow themselves to be embedded within another application. So how do you get around this? It's easy. Scroll to the bottom and click the edit link button. This is how I can edit the link that I've placed in there. And all you'll do is click the open as external resource and click update. What this does is it forces this article, we click back here on module one, it forces this article to open in its own window. So now when I click on this article, you'll notice that it opens a separate tab here at the top and opens the article in full screen. All right, I'm going to go back to my module one. This is sort of a mess. So now let's take a look at how to clean this up, organize it, and make it more viewable for your students. At the beginning, I discussed something called a sub module. And within module one, I have articles for an assignment, I have lectures, and I have readings. So I want to create three sub modules so that I can put each of these items within their right categories. So within module one, on the right hand side, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom until I see add a sub module. And here I'll type in lecture videos. And I'll hit return on my keyboard. I'm going to repeat that process for readings and the assignment. And here you'll see I have all of my materials and I have three empty sub modules. So let's look at how we're going to go about getting these materials into these sub modules. The first one I have is a lecture and that is this bathing your baby. So if I place my mouse over the six dots in front of that link, you'll notice that my cursor changes to a four up error. If I click hold and drag, I can now move that into this box. And I know I'm moving it into the box because the blue dotted line shows up. This stolen paintings is also part of my lecture videos. So again, I'll mouse over the eight dots, click, hold, and drag. I really wanted to put that famous stolen paintings underneath this video. So again, just like I did when I moved it into a new module, I can click, hold, and drag on the eight dots and just move it below the video. So these eight dots here can be used to reorder things as well as moving them into different modules. 
And I'm just going to repeat that process for all of the rest of the readings and the assignment. Once I'm in, I've noticed I've made two mistakes. This isn't a reading, so all I need to do is grab it and move it into my assignments. And this I accidentally dropped outside of a module. You can see it is sitting in between two modules. And again, grab it and drag it to where you want it. Now to prove a point, I added all of these to the main module and then organized them later. But you don't need to do that. You can add anything really to any of these areas by just clicking on it and dragging it into the sub-module that you want. Again, just be sure that you're getting it, your blue line is showing up with inside this sub-module. So you don't have to put them all in and then reorganize them. You can create those sub-modules first and then drag the items in. So there's one last thing that I'd like to show you to help you get your course as clean and usable as possible. I'm going to open my assignments module because you can see that what this does is it brings the files in using the file name that I created on my computer. But this doesn't really mean anything to your students. This isn't giving them any information. So you really should change these names to something that indicates what the file is about. In order to change one file name, I can choose the little drop down arrow next to that file and select Edit Properties in Place. But an easier way when I have to change multiple things is to use this Bulk Edit tool here in the upper right. When I click Bulk Edit, it opens up everything within this module for me to be able to alter. So here I'm going to choose Fall 2019 Board Board Visit. And that tells the student exactly what that is. When I'm done changing all of my titles, I'll just choose the blue Done Editing button in the upper center. And now I'm left with file names that actually mean something to the end user. So we've covered a lot of information today in this video. Just remember, you need to create your modules first. Then you add files from your computer by dragging them and dropping them into Oaks. You create a new web link by choosing the new button and choosing create a link. And then you can reorder and reorganize your files using the, the eight dot icon located in front of the file name. Lastly, to rename these files, Choose either the drop down arrow next to the file and say edit properties in place or choose your bulk edit tool in the top right.